let's talk today about muscle biology and how it might relate to athletic endeavors, athletic training, things like that. So this is where I throw in my disclaimer that I am not an athletic trainer or a sports medicine person, but I understand the basic biology of the muscular system. And so that's what we're focusing on. So it's not specifically that you should be doing these things if you are one of these kinds of athletes, but that this information of the muscular system and how the body works would be useful to you in possibly doing that. Do see your athletic trainer for all of your specifics. All right. So I'm going to compare two sort of different types of athleticism here. So I'm going to use endurance running as one of my types of athleticism. It's actually the one I'm the most familiar with because I do endurance running. So that usually means that you're running at least a 5k, but typically more like maybe a 10k, half marathon, marathon, something like that. So I fairly consistently run half marathons into a number of years. So that's my area of information. The other one that I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially say that you're some kind of field ball player. So what would be a particularly good one for that? Here, let's use basketball because basketball involves a number of different kinds of moves. It involves moving back and forth across a court. It involves dealing with uh, a ball. So lots of different things. All right, so both of these are going to involve sort of different aspects of the muscular system, and in some cases, overlapping aspects of the muscular system. So the first thing I want to talk about are the different, two different major sort of categories of muscle fibers, which are fast twitch fibers and slow twitch fibers. So as a reminder, a twitch is simply a complete muscle contraction doesn't really actually imply how fast or slow the actual muscle contraction goes, but fast twitch and slow twitch do relate to, in many cases, the speed of the activity or at least the way the activity is being done. So when we think of somebody doing something for a long period of time, but isn't necessarily an overly dense or complicated thing, we would think of slow twitch muscle fibers. And when we think of something that's being done short, quick, and powerful, we think of fast twitch muscle fibers. And there's actually a couple different kinds of fast twitch fibers, but we're not going to get into the details on that at this point. So slow twitch muscle fibers are meant for activities that are going to go on for a period of time. So the muscles are going to have to continue to contract, but they don't have to contract as strongly or do as much work in a short period of time. Fast twitch is for an activity that is much more work for a short period, but then is going to be relaxed for a longer period. So that's the sort of important difference between the two. So what kind of activities relate to that? Well, we just said that slow twitch would be long, slow types of activities. So long and slow, and typically in what we would call an aerobic type of situation. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Whereas fast twitch would be quick, and powerful, and very often is done in what we would call an anaerobic type of state. So if you're trying to separate them out, this is how you think about it. So what do we mean by that? Aerobic and anaerobic. So that comes down to what kind of energy sources these things you're using. Every muscle needs energy to contract. That's where the ATP comes from. The question is, is how is the ATP produced and when was it produced? So your body does have some ATP hanging around at all times, but you don't just have like a ton of it hanging around. You have stores of other forms of energy that will become ATP. So if your body just immediately turned everything you ate into ATP, first of all, you wouldn't be able to use it later, which would be a problem. You'd have to constantly be eating, but then also you would just suddenly have a whole bunch of energy when you ate. So let's go back to that endurance running because it talks about aerobic. So the idea here is that this is long and slow. It doesn't need to be a really quick and easy to grab energy source. It can just be energy as produced by the body as needed. We typically do that using the process of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration takes oxygen and sugar and turns them into 
CO2, water, and of course, energy. This process takes place in the mitochondria. At some point, I will have a video about this entire process in detail, but right now, I don't. You just need to know that it happens, and it happens in the mitochondria. But it is a complex process. It is a multi-step, long, complex process. It requires things to travel to the muscles. It requires a lot of different chemical reactions, and it requires an entire system of enzymes. So it makes really great energy, but it doesn't make it super quickly. You also need to then turn storage that you have into that energy. So now if you're eating, you might have sugar in the bloodstream, that sugar can then turn into energy. If you're not currently eating or you run out of sugar in the bloodstream, to keep using this energy source, you then need to also convert fat stores to energy or glycogen stores to energy. And this can be a little bit slower. So you do have stores of sugar in those forms that can be used, but it is a longer, more complex process. All right, now what about quick and powerful? Well, we're not gonna have a lot of time for our body to take oxygen, take sugar, get them to the right place, turn them into ATP, we need other forms. So there are, in fact, three forms of energy that can be used in some way, sort of quickly and instantaneously. One is that you actually do have stored ATP. Every muscle has at least some ATP to do an immediate action where it'll just take that ATP and use it. And then it will replace it with the stuff that's done through cellular respiration. That's the first source, it runs out almost immediately, seconds. The next source is creatine. You might've heard of creatine, especially if you are interested in working out because people like to use it to help them with energy because creatine is a chemical that turns into ATP rapidly and with only like a change or two. So it can turn into ATP quickly. You can't store too, too much of it. So if you don't have a whole bunch of creatine, then you can only use as much as you have. You can add more to the system, but you have to time it correctly. Creatine in your bloodstream is not creatine in your muscles, and that's important. Again, though, that's gone quickly, within minutes, maybe even less than minutes. And then glycogen is the last source that can be used quickly, and that's mostly because it is broken down as part of what will be cellular respiration, but it starts with only step one, which is glycolysis, which creates quick energy without oxygen. The only pro problem with that is that it produces byproducts. And in the case of glycogen, doing glycolysis, it produces the byproduct of lactic acid, which a little bit of lactic acid is okay for your muscles. A lot of lactic acid can be problematic for your muscles. It also makes them burn. It also throws off the oxygen balance, so eventually, if you make lactic acid, you will need more oxygen to turn it back into what you need. All right, so if those are the energy sources that these are gonna use, and you're training your body to improve upon these muscle types, what are these muscles going to do to make this work? Well, if I was a slow twitch muscle, for instance, I realized that my source of energy, oxygen and sugar, comes from the bloodstream. So I would need my bloodstream to send those more effectively and more rapidly to these muscles. And in fact, slow twitch muscles are sometimes considered to be the red muscles of the body because they often have extra blood vessels going to them. Because if you consistently say, well, you need those things, your body's pretty good at responding to various stresses by saying, oh, well, if I need more of something, I should add it. So it goes ahead and it adds more blood vessels. Also, to actually get the energy out of those things, you need mitochondria. So slow twitch muscles often have more mitochondria. So they improve their amounts of mitochondria and their amounts of blood vessels. And consistent, long, slow aerobic training is what tells them they need to do this. You put just a little extra aerobic pressure on them and they go, oh, I should do that. It is really important if you're trying to build these kinds of muscles to keep that training long and slow. You can have some increase in breathing, but really you don't want too much because at that point, your body thinks it needs things fast and it will switch over. So long, slow training is a pretty common parameter for endurance running. If you want to run for a long time, you run for a long time. You could also swim for a long time, bike for a long time. They do the same thing. All right, let's go back to these fast twitch muscles. Well, what do they want to do? Well, they are going to need that energy fast. They do not have time for all of this mitochondria blood vessel noise. They need these things. See what they're going to do? 
they're going to find better ways to store those if you use them up. So I like to think of these energy sources a lot like my kitchen on a regular week or so. Every week is a little bit different. Some weeks I'm running out of the house like crazy every daytime, nighttime, things like that, or at least weeks before we were all inside all the time. And some weeks I am home for dinner every night. When I am home for dinner, I make dinner as much from scratch as I can because I know it's the best kind of energy for me, and it is. So just like your long, slow muscles, they're going to say, oh, if I can do this, I should do it. It's the best way. But if I know I'm going to be busy and I'm not going to have time for that, I will plan ahead. I will make some easy things that I can zap in a microwave that might be my, you know, stored ATP, literally zap that in the microwave, eat it two minutes later. I might pre-make some, some sort of half meals or have half finished things that I can grab and they're ready to go, but I'm going to run out of them if I use them too quickly, like our creatine. And I might completely freeze or pre-prep entire meal or two on the weekend so that it's ready to use. Again, it will run out and it's not as good as it would have been if it was fresh, but that can be like my glycogen. And so your fast switch muscles will, with training of using this kind of source, improve the storage for those sources, which is why you get better at doing such things. So something that makes your muscles burn the first week if you keep doing it and you space it out enough so you're not damaging the muscles in the process, the acid can damage the muscles, then you can build up extra storage of these items and you can provide them at the right times. So you can get more space for creatine in your muscles. And then if you time your creatine intake exactly right, you can even improve it while you're partway through your workout and make you feel better. By the way, that is really hard to do. And creatine that is not immediately taken into the muscles, like if there's no space for it, it gets peed out. So be careful how much you're paying for those fancy supplements and how much of them is creatine because you might be peeing out a lot of expensive supplement. All right, so that's our basics of how these muscles kind of work. So now let's think again about how we'll put some of these other systems together. In the case of the endurance running, there are other things that are involved in this. A strong amount of cardiovascular and respiratory health is also gonna be key to this. So you wanna also give those systems enough stress to improve and work as well. So long, slow running will also improve the way your lungs function and the muscles that move those. With fast twitch muscles, there are some other things involved, but in a lot of cases, it's still sort of muscle oriented. Let's go back to the endurance running. So the endurance running, you do want to do long and slow. You want to keep it going. You want to do this consistently. But it doesn't really bring in a lot of the muscle fibers. So one of the things that you need doing these fast exercises that you need doing long and slow, but you don't always put stress on, is the actual muscle and the muscle fibers themselves. Your muscle doesn't think it's going to be used a lot. It may not build up extra proteins and extra pieces that you need. So they may tire out after a while. So even if the muscle's getting the energy it needs from the oxygen and the sugar, when you put stress on the proteins by making them contract over and over and over and over again for an extremely long period of time, that is also going to cause some damage to them. If they're not used to that kind of stress, they're not gonna be prepared for it or they're not gonna have rebuilt an effective amount of proteins. So do you think, a real good runner can just run slowly all the time? The answer, unfortunately, is no. A real good runner should not just run slowly all the time. They also need to do some things that improve their actual muscles and force some of this extra stuff to happen. So store some of those other items, but also put stress on the muscle fibers, the proteins, the actin and the myosin, and cause the body to improve those proteins, build them up, make sure they are fat and ready to go. So good runners will do things like sprint, which is a quick and powerful exercise. They will also do things like lift weights, which is typically a quick and powerful exercise. You wanna lift something heavy enough to feel it in a fairly short period of time, less than a minute usually with the number of reps you would do. So a good endurance runner has good slow twitch fibers and also activates some of their fast twitch fibers. How about our basketball player? What else are they going to need? Well, they're also going to need good circulation to make sure everything gets where it's going to go. They are really going to rely on those proteins that they're going to work with. So that's an important 
key aspect of being able to build up the proteins and do exercises to do so. In the case of some of these types of things, there are some different sorts of strength exercises you can do. So we said in some previous information that muscles do really three jobs, but two of them are important to movement. One of them is moving things. One of them is stopping things from moving. You're definitely going to be doing both of those in, honestly, both of these sports. You're going to need to have movement muscles and stability muscles. There are actually different kinds of exercises to look at both of those. So if you're looking for stability exercises, you will do what is called an isometric exercise. If you are looking for movement-based exercises, you do what's called an isotonic exercise. So isotonic is literally I move something, maybe I squat or I lift a weight with my biceps or I do a crunch and that makes my abs work. Those are isotonic because they shorten and move the muscle. But I can actually work those same muscles using isometric stability exercises. I can sit in a squat position against a wall for a minute and that's forcing my quads to hold that position and still work but they're doing it in a stability-based manner. I could do a plank for my abdominals. I'd be holding them in position. When you're doing either of these exercises, you really want to think about how those muscles are used and what the best way to deal with them is. If your muscles are mostly for stability, abdominals are mostly for stability, you do more isometric exercises. If you're mostly dealing with isotonic, if you want to be really good at being able to shoot a ball in basketball, you're going to need real good shoulder and arm muscles, you're gonna to wanna to do isotonic versions of those. With running, you probably wanna do a little bit of both because your legs are constantly holding your stability the entire time, but also moving depending on which muscles you're using, in which manner, and really how fast you're moving and how your stride looks and things like that. So both of those are really important exercises. The other thing that I would consider with exercising is to make sure that you exercise in a balanced way. So your muscles actually pair off into groups. And if you overwork one, you can underwork the other one. So we're pretty familiar with this concept. So for example, biceps and triceps. Bicep pulls the arm in, tricep pushes the arm out. You want to work both so you don't actually have one pulling too hard and the other one too loose. Your legs work the same way. Quads and hamstrings. Quads bend, hamstrings straighten. So if I'm a runner especially, I want to work both of those. And the one that people very often leave out, abdominals and back muscles. If you're going to work your abs, you also need to work your back. And in a lot of cases, people have back issues because their abs are not strong enough to hold them up, and then their back is doing extra work. If you have back problems, try doing more abdominal work instead of back exercises. Your back actually gets a lot of exercise you don't think about. Your abs, not so much. All right, one final thing to consider with all of these athletics, which is how do we get all of this stuff that we need? And what is all of this stuff that we need? So all of these things need to come into the body. Some of them come in by breathing, like oxygen and stuff like that, but a lot of them are things you intake, which is why pre-workout nutrition is considered to be actually a key and important thing. So let's think about all the things that make your muscles work and all the things that you would need. From a physical standpoint, your muscles are made of protein. You need enough protein so that if you break the proteins in the process, you can rebuild them, or if you're trying to build them, you can have them. So you need protein, and preferably complete protein, which means it contains all the amino acids your body uses to build things. There are 20 of those. You can get most of them from various foods. You just have to be careful how you do it. If you eat animal things, they're built like us. They contain all the pieces of protein. If you eat plant things, they contain some of the proteins because they're built differently than us, so you have to make sure you contain the right combinations, so like rice plus beans has all the proteins. But so does milk and so does meat. All right, so that's how we build the muscle. We should also try to include some things that help you build the connective tissues, but those are also proteins, so consider that as part of it. Don't forget, protein does everything. How about for muscle movement? What is it that we need to move a muscle? Well, the first thing we need is a nerve, and what do we need to run a nerve? Well, we need sodium and potassium. You know what those are? Those are ions, and when we dissolve ions in solutions, we call them electrolytes. So if you ever wondered why you want electrolytes when you are being active, part of the reason is that you need them to run your nerves. Part of the reason is that you lose them in sweat. 
but you definitely need them to run your nerves. So you don't want to lose too many of them and not have them. So that's important. So you want things with sodium and potassium. Usually you find those in plenty of regular foods. You don't specifically need an electrolyte drink unless you are going a long way from eating and you need to add them or depending on what kind of diet you have. Your muscles need calcium to make them work. So do your nerves. So you need to make sure you have at least some source of calcium in whatever you're doing. It could be in your electrolyte beverage. Read your electrolyte beverages. A lot of them will have calcium in them. It could come from leafy greens. It could come from dairy products. But you want to make sure it's in your bloodstream because don't forget, if you don't have enough calcium to run things, your body steals it off your bones. And you're going to need those for all of these as well. And then finally, you need some kind of energy source. These are energy sources, but you don't usually eat them. Your body has to produce them ahead of time. So you either need some kind of sugar or carbohydrate or fat source that can be turned into a sugar or carbohydrate depending on your current situation. If you need things quickly, you might need the sugar because that can turn into the glycogen, which can turn immediately into some kind of energy. If you're taking the long haul, then the process of cellular respiration in which the mitochondria creates the energy actually runs more efficiently on fats than it does on sugar. It can run on sugar. It's like adding newspaper to a fire. It goes, but fat is like adding a log to a fire. It takes a little longer to catch, but it burns longer and it's much nicer. So if you can do it and you're doing that kind of stuff, Fat stores are good. And you have plenty on your body to begin with. Humans are made with a lot of extraneous fat, even if you're skinny. But you can also eat the fat in the diet. So all of those are important things depending on what you're attempting to accomplish. Also, don't forget about water. You need to stay hydrated in all of these cases to make all of this work. That is an important concept. However, don't do the water without all of these other things. Because remember osmosis, you want things to be in balance. And the human body is not mostly, it, it is a lot of water, but it's water with a lot of stuff dissolved in it. So to maintain your osmotic balance, you want to make sure you have liquid, but you also have the electrolytes. That's the main purpose. So don't drink water without having other things to keep everything happy, balanced, and functional. And this is what makes your muscles work and hopefully work well for you over a period of time. So that's all I have about muscles today. <laughs>